Hello, welcome back to another episode of Super Spurs. It's me, DJ FM here. Today's mini episode is a breakdown of the summer transfers that have been happening since we've last seen each other in terms of the ins and also, as you'll be able to see from the right hand side, quite a lot of outs for the club. Always begin with the outs on these types of episodes. If we go on to the actual fee side of things on the top right hand part here, if it actually works. Four big transfers that have gone out. Eric Lamella and Hugo Lloris have both left to join Paris Saint-Germain. Unfortunately with Lamella, he got an offer that came in from PSG, which was just unfortunately too good to turn down. He was only valued at 10 million. I got 20 million for him. Yes, he is a very, very good player, but the whole point of the episode is that we're trying to develop English young players. The bid came in, it was accepted. Unfortunately, it's just the way it goes. You'll be able to see from the left-hand side that um, obviously we have signed Jack Butland, which meant that Hugo Lloris was going to be a backup for me from now on. Now, I offered him out on a transfer. He was valued at 15 million at the time. PSG wouldn't go above 20. They were the only club that came in for him. At the age of 29, he's probably entering his prime now. But again, exactly the same with Eric Lamella. The whole point of this series is for English players. Yang Vertonghen was an interesting one. To be honest, he wasn't getting a lot of football for me last season. He was he was on the periphery of the of the squad, and I didn't want to have another season of him just being around. He complained that Hugo Lloris was sold and was the only player to complain in the squad. He was causing a lot of problems. All the players came to me and started saying, "We don't, we're not happy with where you treated uh, Yang Vertonghen." I just decided to get rid of him. I probably could have got a lot more for him, but again, at the age of 29, Man City and I think it was Chelsea were the only ones that came in with a bid for him. He's He's gone to Man City. I'm not overly fussed about it. Yes, he's a pretty solid defender, but he never really did much for me. And I found out that his lack of pace really did get caught out on quite a few occasions. The other major transfer is Ben Davis. Now, with... This is a difficult one, obviously with him being Welsh and all, but we've got a good left back in Sullivan now coming through. I just felt it was time for Ben Davis to move on. He's going to get a lot of first team football there at Norwich. Um, he is a good player. I do like him in real life, actually. But, you know, we've got five million for him. He's not going to see an awful lot of activity. In terms of the outs, the rest of the players you really see on here are sort of free transfers where... They, were, they weren't they were really at the star potential that we needed to, to to really bring them through and carry on paying their wages. The only one that I am slightly disappointed about as I go through some of these stats on here, you can pause this at any time. Kenneth McAvoy, we'll go with that. Now, he's obviously now gone to Blackburn. He wasn't ever going to be at the level where he's going to be getting consistent games for us. And although he is Irish, again, the whole point is the English mentality. Shaquille, now he was obviously and is an English player, but his potential and what he was actually doing, I wasn't overly impressed with his loan spell. He's now left and has joined Sheffield United on a free transfer. Tom Carroll was the major one I was quite disappointed with myself with, but we've got a lot of English players in centre midfield now. He wasn't going to get any game time for me, so he I released him on a free transfer. Um, he's now being played at Toronto FC, so maybe not the worst idea in the world. And the rest of the players that we've got going out of the club are all loan transfers now. So yeah, Ben Garrett's the major one that has gone out. He didn't impress me last season. I wanted him to get first in football, get a whole year under his belt and see how he progresses. Dominic Ball, as I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, I wasn't entirely comfortable with him. He's gone to MK Dons. Alec Pritchard, I was, um, I was actually thinking of using him this season, but... I'm going to give him a lover lo uh, loan spell this time at Derby County to see how he gets on. He's got quite good, well, you know, well-rounded attributes, but it, I'm probably going to sell him, to be honest. Yedlin, we tried to sell. No one wanted to buy him. As soon as I put him out on loan, 30 clubs came in for him. He's chosen Cardiff. Good luck to him. Clinton, exactly the same. Offered him out as a transfer. No one wanted him. I even offered as low as 2 million for people. No one wanted him. Offered him out on loan. 20 clubs came in for him. He's gone to St. Etienne. Kyle Walker's Peters has got another loan move. This time he's gone to Bolton. Hopefully he can get some good first team experience there. I'm going to assess him in January. If he's not playing that particularly well or the games are just not up to his level, then I'm going to recall him back. 
Grant Ward's gone out on loan. Again, I'm not expecting a massive amount from him, but good luck at Wolves. Um, Sterling has gone on loan to Chesterfield. He's got a big future with us. I really want him to have a productive year and get some of his stats up, improve everything else other than his pace. Nathan Adua has gone to Millwall. He's probably going to be either sold in the summer. Bennett has gone on loan to Wickham. Good luck to him. Joshua Anoma, he's the big one. Now, Sunderland said they're prepared to give him first-team football. Now, Sunderland are still in the Premier League, so... I'm going to assess him over the month of August, see if he's actually getting any game time. If he's not, I'm going to recall him and loan him out to somebody else. And then the rest of the players you've got on here are not really going to feature for me much in the future. Maybe Cameron Carter-Vickers might do. I'll see how he does with his Rotherham save. Now, the big thing, the most important thing, the incomes. This is huge. Every single one of these is English. Every single one of these is a young player. Jack Butland commanded a massive fee, but I'm expecting big things from him over the next, well, however many years that we do this series. He's a good English goalkeeper. In real life, I think he's only a couple of years away from really testing Joe Hart and pushing him for the England number one spot. He's got all the attributes to really push on now. Our backup goalkeeper, I wasn't entirely comfortable having a youth player for the rest of this, you know, rest of the season. So we bought in Sam Johnson from Man United for two and a half million. He's a good enough goalkeeper. I'll see how he gets on. He's going to play most of the backup games. Daniel Griffiths came in on a free transfer. We already know about him. Very, very good poacher. Age 16. I'm going to try and loan him out the second he turns 17 years old. Joe Gomez was an interesting signing. I've spent £10 million on him. I'm hoping he can really progress in the future. He's going to be playing at centre-back. I'm going to be getting him to training up as a ball playing defender. I think he's got all of the attributes for that. We're going to need to improve his passing to try and get him, around, you know, to get him a bit better on that. But he's young, he's English, is what the series is after. He's, a, he's going to be a really good player for us. Nathan Redmond is the player I'm most looking forward to using. He has been phenomenal in pre-season and I really do mean phenomenal. He commanded... Not the biggest fee, but his wages. He demanded a lot for his wages. I really wanted to get him, so, you know, I, I'm not overly fussed with it. But in the seven games he's played in terms of friendly matches, he's scored five goals and five assists. He has been brilliant. Really, I'm looking forward to this. Jack Greenis, I signed him for £10 million. Aston Villa were really easy to negotiate with this one. They didn't really put a much of a fight for him. He is going to be a good option for us. He's going to be playing in the backup sort of team and being on the bench a lot for us. So he is going to feature quite a few games. He's 20 years old. He's got all the time in the world to improve. He is English. I'll just check to see whether or not he's got a cap. He hasn't got a cap. He's going to need to do that soon. Possibly Ireland may snap him up again. I don't know. But for the time being with him being English, he is in the squad. So yeah, that just to wrap, about wraps up today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's a lot that I have gone through, especially with the free transfers and the loan moves. But I think it's good to engage with everyone so you know how the whole squad is doing in general. Not just, oh, well, we sold such and such for £20 million and that's the big thing. It, it's not the big thing. The whole point of this series is that everyone develops as a whole club and not just individual players. But yeah, as I said, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave a like, comment subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, let me know what you make of the signings, are they good, are they bad, what do you think, how do you like the philosophy of what we're trying to do with the English players, as said, leave me some details in the description below, sorry, comments below rather, and we'll see how we get on, until next time, adios.